Okay. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, shiatsu therapists, brothers and sisters and lovers all over the world. Another week, another great episode with another great guest, a returning guest, all the way from Vienna, Austria, Mike Mandel. Mike Mandel, uh, welcome. Thanks a lot for the uh, invitation. Huh? Thanks a lot for having me back. Uh, much appreciated. Thanks. Well, I, I always appreciate you uh, from the time that we met in, in the Congress uh, in Vienna, 2017, a Congress that uh, whoever was there will never forget. It was a highlight in my professional career, so well organized and, and just uh, an unforgettable event and endeavor uh, that you created for all of us there in 2017. Yeah, that was a fun party, huh? <laughs> Incredible party, but we're not going to talk about what happened in the party. <laughs> But it was, it was nice. Uh, we, we were the lucky ones because uh, it was uh, pre-COVID, if we can talk like this, pre-COVID times. And uh, so yes. we could pack together 600 people from all over the world. And uh, I really enjoyed uh, like uh, to feel all those people. So many people connected to Shiatsu from all over the world. And uh, that, that, that was a very good uh, uh, feeling. And uh, That it, was an uh, incredible feeling. Yes, uh, the connectedness to all the other people and the coming together, sharing the same spirit. And it, it had a lot of impact also in uh, in Vienna. That's why we went into the city. But we we leave the Congress behind us. Yes. <laughs> and uh, and also very, very impressive with the, your teacher, uh, Henrik Nielsen. Yeah, uh, Thomas, and Thomas Nielsen. So, and, uh, and you have done with the Hara Shiatsu Institute uh working also in the different uh departments in hospital settings uh, and having your students participate there uh is incredible work uh, that i always also want to highlight uh, that is ongoing uh so yeah uh, incredible that the type of work that you guys do there so impressive so inspiring yeah yeah thanks um thanks um we still love to do it so <laughs> and uh in some hospitals we've been now for more than 25 years which is quite a long time uh, to stay in a hospital with shiatsu <laughs> so <laughs> i think uh if it wouldn't work they would have kicked that uh, kicked us out 10 years ago already <laughs> so <laughs> because uh in a hospital is uh, you know in a hospital you have to do something that works um, uh, and uh, you have to prove yourself and basically this was the idea why we went into the hospitals so we want to prove that we, we can do something uh, with uh, shiatsu that we can really can contribute to shiatsu, uh, uh, with, with our work and uh, but in a hospital it's not enough that after 10 times you know the people say yes i'm a little bit more relaxed and uh, you know i feel more centered yes this is nice but in a hospital you need to get results with, with your work according to the field you're working in so uh, if you work in the rehabilitation and, and the shoulder is like this afterwards it has to be like this so if it's not like this you lost you lost the game <laughs> and uh, yes yes but, uh, so um, i like this sportive uh, aspect uh, of uh, shiatsu and uh, but maybe because uh, i see see adam also here he's on our school uh, this weekend with uh, qigong which is very nice uh, i think i want join because i'm a little bit sick we had a talk already michael and the but uh, but uh, in in the traditions uh, and i love the, the spirit of these traditions and um, because they say sometimes you have to prove your method sometimes you have to prove your method so even if it. you do qigong which is not really compact method you have to prove yourself and uh, so we, we we took over this idea and said uh, with shiatsu we 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 need to go in an environment where we really have to prove ourselves like it was a little bit like this combat situation you know yes, yes. <laughs> all the medical staff and uh, what are you doing here with shiatsu what are you doing with your hands come on and this is woolly and stuff like that but uh, uh Yes, more than 25 years now, I think uh, that, that's pretty much uh, nice. Yes, uh, 
st still on fire for it. Love it. I love it. I love it. I love your passion and dedication and uh, and the spirit of uh, trying to prove uh, effective and viable this therapy is to the most critical part of our population, the medical the medical uh, society, right? Uh, but let's let's get into our topic here. You know, uh, you've been doing it now for what over thirty years, Mike. Yes, yeah, around 30 years. Yeah, uh, full time. You know, and uh, I've been doing it now almost for 22 years. And uh, we have many experienced shiatsu therapists here with us uh, on, on our Zoom panel. And uh, this is not just, uh, you know, me and Mike talking. This is an invitation for everybody here on the panel to join us about, you know, talking about what, what are the principles of, of our therapy, shiatsu therapy. You know, uh, can we agree or, or disagree even, you know, on uh, what are the principles of our therapy? So let's dive into that, Mike, because we, we, we see a lot of different. What I love about our last episode that we did was your metaphor about our therapy, that it's like a tree. Uh, yes. <laughs> and it has the, the deep roots of the past that go all the way back to China and, and uh, uh, Sh uh, Shintoism and, and Anma. And, uh, and then we have Shiatsu, which is like the, the stem that, you know, Namikoshi and Masunaga uh, uh, and uh, brought into, you know, uh, Japan and, and the rest of the world and others. And then we have the branches and the different variations of Shiatsu that have stem from that tree uh but in a sense uh it's all over the place and there's a lot of division <laughs> and there's a lot of uh, uh whose method is better whose method is more right uh so 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 let's get into it let's let's bring some discussion into it let's illuminate this for for ourselves and uh, for our community yeah, I mean, it's kind of a tri tricky topic. Uh, yes. On the one hand, uh, Shiatsu is uh, actually it's a, a very young method. Uh, what are we talking about? Maybe uh, not even 100 years now. And uh, so if a, a method is uh, very young, uh, it might not have established like very common uh, principles. But still, uh, Shiatsu has a lot of influences. And uh, so, so maybe uh, if you go further down the line, you have to look for those principles to uh, to uh, uh, um, to find. Yeah, you have to look for those principles. But I think uh, what we experience right now, maybe it's just a situation in Europe. I don't know. But um, in my opinion, uh, in my feeling, uh, many Asian arts they 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 are losing something. Uh, they are about to lose uh, something. And uh, in my opinion. Many of these arts, they are losing their their core, whatever that core might be. So, in, in my idea, it's uh, that you can use those methods <clears throat> as kind of a path. So, uh, in many Asian arts, uh, there is the possibility you can dive into the method, and if you dive deep enough into the methods, it, it's like a path, and and, and the path will. Uh, unfold for you and and the path can uh, um, cultivate uh, your your personality and uh, uh, moves along your personality but th at the end there there should always be some kind of spir spirituality uh, involved so it's much more than a than a than a, than a method it's really a path and um, but uh, like in general, I have the impression many Asian methods are, are losing this uh, aspect. Uh, for example, if you talk about uh, uh, yoga, I, I hope there are not too many uh, big yoga fans <laughs> among us, but maybe you can share my idea. Because I think, uh, you know, uh, yoga spreads so quick. It's incredibly like uh, in Vienna, I think you have a, a yoga studio around uh, almost uh, every corner. So, so everyone is uh, uh, doing yoga. And the funny part is you can uh, become yoga teacher in uh, five or six uh, weeks. I, I've seen courses like uh, this. So after six uh, weeks, you have a certificate that you are a yoga teacher and then you are able to, <laughs> to teach. And I uh, honestly think, uh, then, uh, so, so what, what are you teaching then, really? What are you teaching then? Because uh, in the original idea, 
uh, yoga was kind of a, a complete uh, system. And if you walk all along the path, you know, like the final step would be to to, to unify with with a bigger with a bigger source, how, however you you want to call that bigger source. But right now, yoga has become, uh, in, in many cases, it's, it's just a fitness uh, a trend. And you, you have very uh, bizarre forms of yoga, like, uh, I don't know, uh, I've seen beer yoga already. Yeah? Uh, yoga and beer, how you can drink beer in uh, exciting asanas. And you have a naked yoga and uh, you, you have reggae yoga, whatever. So uh, it, it, it's nice, you know, it, it's nice. <clears throat> but on the other hand, I think um we are re really losing something especially in yoga we are losing something but you have that in other methods uh, as well so uh, you, you also have it like uh, in the tai chi qigong system it's it's the same more or less there were always complete uh, systems but uh, many people nowadays they just practice it for relaxation you know just to calm down a little bit to increase your breathing which of course it is nice and it's important to have this method, but uh, like uh, we, we just practice like this part of, 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 I mean, I could not show it how big the systems are, really are. So, and uh, yoga, fitness trend, Qigong, you could say it's maybe for relaxation, which is nice, but we lose the idea of the path in those methods. And we also lose this idea of the path in the healing uh, methods because also, if you go deeper in uh, TCM, uh, it, it was never like this medical system alone. So this is like a TCM medicine. I'm, I'm a TCM uh, doctor. Like uh, if you study the history of all the, the famous doctors in, in, in Chinese medicine, they were, they were all Taoists. So, so, so they merged the medicine in kind of a path. So I think this is a phenomena uh, we, we have to tackle uh, right now. And uh, this of course is also true <laughs> for shiatsu and uh, we, like can, we can say we can say that's the first principle shiatsu therapy is a path it's more than a therapy <laughs> nah you know it was the last con congress in the kindal so and I, I had a day off uh, i did not do any lectures and uh, I, I walked around uh, and uh, so i visited i had a look into every room of the congress uh, and it was quite funny because uh, when you look into five rooms, you see five people doing something completely different, completely different. So it, it really, and I tried to be obje objective and relaxed, but <laughs> it would have been very hard, you know, that really, I, I, of course, the only um, similarities were that uh, there are two persons working with each other, but uh, the style they were working with each other, they were completely different. <laughs> so uh, if you, uh, it was not that I could bring those five different rooms together under the umbrella of uh, shiatsu which of course was happening and, and and still is and then so my quest began and so i think you know, shiatsu is a young method so it's a very young method and uh, but still still it's very important for a method to at least have some basic principles we all agree on uh, we need some basic uh, principles uh, to to agree on because otherwise, I think uh, there is too much personal interpretation coming into a method, like I see this, or this is my take on that, or I view it like this. <clears throat> There's nothing wrong against it, but uh, the more personal interpretation we have, the more we lose kind of a common core. And I think we need a common core where we always can uh, come back to. Like, and, and you have it in uh, systems with a longer history. You always have this common core. Like TCM has so many faces, but there are a few root principles you find in every uh, face of TCM. You will find those principles. At least you can come back and ask, uh, does this apply to the principle of yin and yang or, or, or the five phases? At, at least you will find, find something like that. And uh, in my idea, I think we, we even lose the, the, the principle of uh, yin and yang in shiatsu. And I think we even uh, lose uh, some very basic uh, energetic uh, principles which should be, in my opinion, they should be common sense for, for energy work anyway. So what are they? Um, so um, I'm, 
you know, uh, I wrote down some uh, some some questions this week for me to uh, to, to sort my my thoughts. And uh, so it, it's very common in in, in Europe uh, right now uh, in the shiatsu scene to say uh, we are we are not treating symptoms. Uh, so the, some people are very proud to say we are not working with uh, symptoms. Okay, and you know. In, in some countries, you have uh, law regulations uh, that don't allow you to say that, that you're uh, working or treating symptoms, but it's really kind of a, a common sense because if you're uh, treating symptoms, it, it seems like, you know, like a, the lower work in energy work. No, we don't treat symptoms. We always treat the uh, complete uh, person. Now, I, I heard that saying a lot. Uh, and uh, sometimes if I say I work in the hospital and with symptoms, I have the impression, ah, you're the one that does the symptoms. And, uh, but but I, I, I don't get this point. I don't understand this point. So why? This brings us to a principle. <laughs> so I think in energy work, we should... I think we can say uh, one of the principles or laws could be that the macrocosmos reflects into the microcosmos and the microcosmos reflects in the macrocosmos. Uh, I'm not sure if we agree on that, but I think yeah. this is really a basic energetic law and you find this law all over the world. It's not a, a, a specific law for TCM. We had it in the European alchemy. We, we had it like uh, wherever you go, if there is a, a, an evaluated system, you will find that idea. So the small reflects the big and the big reflects in the small. So um, in the symptom, you know, everything is in the symptom. Everything is in the symptom. So uh, if I take this uh, cup of tea, you could say it's a cup of tea. But if I look very deep in the, into the cup of tea, uh, I, I can see the, the tea farmer in, in, in China uh, working on the field. You know, I can see his family. I can see his uh, children. You know, I can see the company that brings the tea to the, to the big city. And I can see the ship crossing the ocean. So basically, <laughs> with the right point of view in the, in the cup of tea, there's the whole world. I, I think that was meant with this principle. So if we say we don't work with symptoms, I would say people admit they are not able to see the whole human in the symptom. They are not able to see the whole human in the symptom because no symptom is just a symptom. It's impossible. It's, it's not just a symptom. Yeah? You have a history. It's, a, it's not happening by chance that you have this symptom. So even if I say I work with headache, for example, and I, if I look deep enough into the headache, I, 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 can, I can see the whole person. And also, if I just work with this headache, I can address the whole uh, person. And, uh, but I, I experience a kind of a polarity in the shiatsu world uh, concerning already this uh, question. Do you work with symptoms? You don't work with symptoms. If you work with symptoms, you don't see the whole <laughs> yeah. person. So, um, but then it's funny because um, I think it's funny because for me, this is a basic energetic law. So if we stick, for example, to this basic energetic law, it's not about working with symptoms or not working with symptoms. It's the ability to see the whole person and the whole history in the symptom and vice versa, to see the whole person and why especially this whole person became this specific uh, uh, symptom. And it would be, for me, it would be nice, for example, that we just could agree, for example, that the micro cosmos reflects in the macrocosmos and uh, vice versa, then uh, we wouldn't have this discussion work with symptoms or not. <laughs> yes, I get it. I agree. I, I have, uh, I mean, um, the symptoms do tell the whole story, the totality of the story, and uh, and the story can reflect the, the totality of the symptoms, you know. Um, yeah. And, uh, I love the, the micro reflects the macro and vice versa. Yes, but still, if we say, you know, Shiatsu has a short history, not even 100 years. And, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yes, it's a short time to develop principles. So uh, you, you have to take over maybe. Uh, so if I talk about principles, you know, it's, um, 
I, I don't want to talk about personal principles. I, I, I think we have a kind of energetic laws, like really laws. It's not like this is a philosophy. It's a really kind of a, of a law. And if we say shiatsu is en energy work, at least we, we should stick uh, to, to some of these energetic <laughs> laws. And yeah. yes, that would be a, a principle. And uh, the next one would maybe be uh, yin and yang. Uh, uh, we could argue if we would need uh, yin and yang, but uh, you, you don't need to call it yin and yang. You, you can call it the print principle of polarity you know and the principle of polarity is also something very universal uh, the principle of uh, polarity you, you you find it in every uh, spiritual uh, tradition but uh, as i perceive the shiatsu world in europe right now we don't even stick to the um, principle uh, uh, of yin and yang and and it was funny because it was uh, six months ago i had a, a very <laughs> how should i say uh, emotional discussion <laughs> about this topic also uh, i was one of the big european teachers and he said yeah you know yes you talk about the principle and uh, for me this is a theory and then I said, yeah, that's interesting. Um, it can be seen as a, a theory, but uh, is gravity a theory? Is gravity, is it a theory or is it a law? <laughs> I don't know. I, I think on the material level of existence, it's kind of a law. Or maybe it's just a belief system we all tap into. Uh, might also be true. <laughs> and yeah, maybe yeah. there are some people who can hack it and they can fly around. Also possible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But basically, you know, uh, for me, it's much more than a theory. It, it's a principle. And, uh, and, uh, and that's what I meant also with the idea of a path like uh, that the asian systems are kind of a path and and the path can lead you to a point where the theory can become like a a, a, a field law like you feel the law it's not the theory you explain with your head but uh, i think then you really have to feel the, the basic energies of uh, yin and yang and, and then it's no theory anymore but uh let's start just stick to yin and yang because another good question uh, that's always discussed in the shiatsu world is uh, should we do diagnosis or not <laughs> that's a good yeah. one and what is should diagnosis we... and what does it look like you know yeah I... <laughs> <laughs> that's a good, uh, that's a good point um it, it's very funny because many people in, in Europe, uh, refer to the Masonaga style, uh, refer to the Masonaga style. And actually, Masonaga, he was kind of keen. He, he liked diagnosis. Uh, he, he really liked diagnosis. If you uh, read his books, you can read it uh, through his uh, lines. And uh, he did a lot of diagnosis. And uh, he also left us the famous quote, you know, diagnosis is treatment and treatment is diagnosis. So this is what uh, Masunaga said. And I think this is a very wise quote because it brings together yin and yang. You know, diagnosis is treatment, but treatment is also a, a, a diagnosis. But uh, what's happening, uh, I see it especially in Europe, people stay to treatment is diagnosis. Uh, they, they skip the first part. Uh, we don't do diagnosis because uh, if I touch, uh, this is already uh, the diagnosis and uh, I, I, I know everything. Uh, no, you don't. I, I honestly believe, no, you don't. You don't. And uh, and um, But uh, we could come back to that point later because another question would be, do we need knowledge in uh, Shiatsu? Uh, do we uh, need to study theory? And personally, I think yes, but this is also has to do with the idea of yin and yang. Because uh, uh, diagnosis, you could say, uh, yeah, it's a mixture of everything. But to make it clear, uh, so to, to make it more uh, <laughs> uh, easier, I would say maybe diagnosis is the young approach. It's the young approach, and maybe the treatment with the hands and the intuition and the feeling. And this would be more more more, more the yin approach. And uh, if we want to call shiatsu a holistic 
a holistic method, I think we need both. And that's what Masanaga said. Uh, treatment uh, is diagnosis, but diagnosis is treatment. And I think what he said is also, if you do a very good diagnosis, a diagnosis where you maybe see the whole person and the symptom or vice versa. So where you really see the person, if you really see the person like that, that can be a treatment already, just to see the person, you know, just to I see agree. who is there, like from heart to heart, from soul to soul, mm. to see this person. This is already as effective as a treatment. But right now, in the European Shiatsu scene, it's kind of cool. No, we don't do diagnosis and uh, uh, really it's like that. I have newsletters <clears throat> that point it out very uh, clearly. And uh, I think it's, we don't need it. Uh, honestly, I think we don't need it. I can understand the idea behind it because, uh, you know, Eastern arts, uh, Eastern arts are a great field of projection. <laughs> they are a great field of projection. And uh, in, in many, uh, you know, uh, we like to project a lot of our romantic fantasies into Eastern arts. So there you don't get judged, you don't get labeled, you know, there's no hierarchy and stuff like that. And, uh, and if you hear diagnosis, diagnosis in our head is wired with labeling you know and there is kind of a hierarchy there's an expert and he gives you a label and this is the diagnosis and uh, th this is wired in our brain so i can understand uh, like the history of why many people like to say we don't do diagnosis but i think if you say it like that you, you don't really understand the the the, the idea of the Asi asian arts it's it's not yeah. about it's not about labeling, uh, not at all, uh, not at all. It's, uh, it's uh, I would say diagnosis is to be able to see the, the possible natural state of a human being. So what does uh, mean natural? I mean, there are other words for it, but, but, but what is like his, his, his natural energy, you know, the, the most, the energy that is not influenced, that it's not tortured, that it's not twisted. So, so who is a person like in his soul? I think this is diagnosis. And, uh, but uh, and, uh, and 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 diagnosis is just to to see what what prevents the person to be like that. You know, uh, what, said. yeah, what said. are the difficulties and. Uh, so if I, 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 I diagnose, I don't want to label you a headache, but uh, I can see you're not the natural person you could be. It's like a flower. If I, if I look at people, I, I see them as flowers. And, uh, and, and what can I do to, to make them flourish? You know, uh, because uh, sometimes they're missing light and sometimes they're they are missing water. And uh, I think that should be a very natural re uh, reaction in Shiatsu, a natural reaction. Like if you have plants in, a, in your room i have plants here i love plants and but um if the plant is you know if the leaves get brown and and the soil is very dry are you allowed to give the plant water it's a question to you <laughs> <laughs> if if i'm if i'm allowed to give him water of course i'm allowed to give him water no, you're not. You're diagnosing that it's a dry soil. You know, you're interfering with the, the, the natural way. <laughs> not allowed. You know, you're interfering. This is not the way. You know, this is not the mm. way. You're doing something. Yeah. Okay. This is uh, pretty much overdone. But uh, sometimes, it, you know, people come to us and uh, it's not about of labeling. It's it, what will you naturally do? Uh, what is missing and uh, i think uh, this is the idea of uh, the idea of diagnosis in eastern arts but become better we come back to yin and yang i think we need both like uh, a good practitioner uh you know a good practitioner should bring together uh, the best diagnosis he or her can crystal sharp like really the best diagnosis you can do crystal sharp with every tools you have and th then you work you 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 use maximum intuition maximum intuition you know like but you have to merge those two together and and then we are talking about a, 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 a holistic uh, a system because 
I don't know that you get all the information when you touch someone. And then uh, if I have these discussions, I always uh, ask the people to feel my pulse and tell me about my pulse, but no one dares to do it then because they know they cannot give me all the information about my pulse. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. But anyway, and I think you, we have it too also in the idea of knowledge, you know, knowledge and intuition. It's uh, also it's also the principle of yin and yang. So do we need knowledge? Uh, yes, of course, I think we need it. And uh, I think we should give our best to, to, to gain as much knowledge as we can. I think, it's, I think it's not good for our method to claim that you, you don't need knowledge at all and, uh, that, and that everyone can do it. Uh, I think that's not true. Uh, uh, I, I don't want to offend uh, anyone, but I think this is, it's wrong. Uh, you, you need knowledge. And uh, because, um, <clears throat> you know, again, knowledge might be the yang aspect and uh, the feeling, the yin aspect, and, and they have to, mer to merge together. But still, if you're feeling something, so, so what is happening if you're feeling something? I think that's very interesting. So, so what actually is happening when we are feeling something? Uh, basically, we just get a sensation. We, we just get a sensation. If we touch someone, we get a sensation, a tingling, I don't know, itching, something like that. So, so but uh, the sensation has no has no label on it. It's just a sensation. So what's always happening in the background is you have an internal data system. You have an internal data system and 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 you always, Try uh, to to uh, to put that information you got into your internal uh, data system, and, uh, and then uh, you might say, "Ah, yes, I feel you're sorry. Uh, I, I feel I feel grief. I feel fear. This can also happen, but it happens because also we have this emotional internal uh, 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 database. Yeah, uh, I can tell you that this is really is true because uh, yes, uh, <laughs> I I have not. Uh, treated any enlightened person uh, yet uh, i might have but i'm not sure because but i don't have this in my internal database so it's impossible yeah. for me so the most <laughs> enlightened person could lie you know on my mat i would not feel it uh, or maybe you would feel it i think you would feel it but you get the idea so we have kind of an internal data uh, system and uh, so how do we shape this internal data system with information so uh, i think it's good to have the maximum of information, the maximum of information, and then, then you forget it. Then you forget it. You don't approach with the maximum of information. It's just like a small noise in the background. And when uh, some response comes in from the client, uh, I can search for 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 uh, uh, something. And uh, and this is also kind of a tradition, like in the Asian arts. First, you learn everything. You really have to learn everything. You, know, you have to learn all the acupuncture points, you know, all the indications, and then then you forget them all. But I think in shiatsu, we <laughs> we skip the learning. We start with the forgetting everything. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah, but uh, this, this, that's just my take on it, you know. But uh, I would say yin and yang. I, I, I think it's it would be nice in the shiatsu world that we at, knee, at least, you know, um, accept the principle of yin and yang and that we could say, yes, maybe I work a little bit more on the yin side. That's your personal style. Uh, that's fine. And some people work more on the yang side. That's also fine. Of course, we bring in our personal preferences. But uh, we should not say diagnosis is not good, or we should not say knowledge is not good. And I think we should not say that you don't need to learn something. And, uh, and the most funny part <laughs> for myself is, is uh, uh, damn, uh, I think, I, again, I don't want to offend uh, anyone. Maybe it's my personal history, but... Uh, I think most of the people have no clue at all how much effort it needs to be effortless. How damn much effort it needs to be effortless. Yes, <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> I agree. It's yeah, not like, it's... Uh, 
And also, if you if you look even if you look like Buddhist meditation, it's a, every every tradition work starts with a lot of body work, with a lot of body work, with a lot of body work, hours of sit, sitting to cleanse your body in yoga, and I think in shiatsu it would be nice as well. So yin and yang, yes, uh, interesting. Beautiful. Huh? Beautiful. Well, there's there's a lot of juicy uh, principles here that you introduced. Um, I would like to add a few also that uh, I always see is is a conflict uh, in our therapy, and one of them the actual application of it. So, you know, what makes shiatsu different than massage or other therapies is 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 also the uh, is it a massage is it a therapy? what is the application is just the thumbs or it's more than the thumbs it's the elbows the knees or or we don't touch anymore and it's distant or, or we touch but no manipulation so so i see this range of 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 techniques and and and, and no common principle right um what can you say into that mike yeah, uh, for me, um, uh, I, I, I'm always looking for those principles. And there is one, a very nice one, actually, like uh, in, uh, in, uh, in traditional Chinese medicine, or, or maybe uh, traditional Chinese medicine is not is not that what we know in the West. It, it has much uh, older roots and it's more rooted in Taoism. So when we talk about traditional medicine, it's uh, not the one that Mao exported into the West. And uh, yes. they have a very nice model. It's like uh, you have, uh, you have uh, three levels of medicine because they always try to put everything into one, three or five, you know, it's they like the, <laughs> they like the, <laughs> the, the, the numbers. But uh, I think this is very uh, interesting. So you have the medicine of the earth, you have the medicine of heaven, and you have the uh, medicine of humanity. And so what is medicine uh, of the earth? So medicine of the earth is if something is going on with my body, I have physical problems. Uh, if I have physical problems, I need medicine for the earth. And uh, this would be the part where I work also more uh, physical, you know, like, uh, I, uh, as you said, you know, it's like really going into the body, cleanse the body, maybe use some some herbs, for example, but then you really have to, uh, it, it reflects on the level of, of, of the tree. Uh, three treasures, you know, the three treasures, the Sambao, Ching, Chi, Shen, that would be the equivalent of, of Ching, so the physical plane, the, the, uh, the, the medicine for, for the earth. And then we have the uh, medicine for humanity. It, this means uh, just uh, to, to make your constitution stronger. So uh, you have no illness, you have no problems, but uh, uh, even nowadays in the modern times, you need a lot of energy to just survive. Huh? <laughs> you need a lot of energy just to stay, uh, you know, uh, healthy in your mind. So at this level, uh, medicine of humanity, it's uh, it's uh, it, it makes you stronger, like a constitutional medicine. It should uh, support your constitution. And then you have medicine uh, from heaven, which is uh, a spiritual development. It's spiritual uh, development. And so uh, you, you try to support the people to connect to heaven. And a, and a good doctor knows if a person comes to you, which part of the medicine the person needs. Sometimes you need medicine for the earth. Sometimes you need medicine for humanity. And sometimes you need medicine for, for, for your spirit to grow. And I would say, even if we, you know, the more you go up to heaven, uh, the less intervention or the less physical basis work is uh, necessary. And, uh, but so in my impression is, Shiatsu is somewhere, I think Shiatsu tries to find its place in the medicine of heaven, but uh, skips like the medicine of the earth and uh, skips the medicine for uh, humanity. And, uh, but you know, my, my example for this is like, uh, if you have toothache, what do you want? Uh, you want to have a very competent uh, <laughs> dentist <laughs> that helps you to get rid of this uh, toothache. And after that, we can talk about nutri nutrition, no sugar, you know, cleansing your teeth. So uh, first medicine for the earth and then medicine for uh, humanity. And uh, I think 
I don't know if there's a spiritual dimension in toothache. I I'm sure there is. <laughs> there's always the micro reflects the macro, remember. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have always near-death experiences uh, when I'm at the dentist. So maybe it's part of it. There we go. Beautifully no, but said. It, yeah, go but, ahead. Uh, that also would be easy because th then you would, it's very funny, you know, um, that I see styles, you know, I see styles that say I'm, I'm more, I do more energetic shiatsu or, or maybe I do more uh, physical shiatsu or, 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 you know what I mean? So it's a, I, I, I work more with the mind and I, I think uh, if we say that, I think we make the same mistake let's call it for as a mistake for for this time as western medicine just to focus on 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 one aspect yes uh, uh this is not holistic medicine so and uh, uh we, we try you know we love holistic medicine because it it includes everything so 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 my question is then why exclude for example the medicine for the earth where you are able to to treat symptoms and uh, really try also to to heal people but why should we cut that off if we cut that off it's here you have uh, western medicine yang and here we have shiatsu yin and it's again a separation it's again a separation it's it's, it's not coming together we are just switching to the other end of the scale and uh, i think it would be much better to 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 go more to find the center yeah mm. it's interesting i had a, a first time client yesterday and kind of touches on our discussion here and she is a woman that uh, travels a lot and uh, she has known about shiatsu for many years and she has gone to many in her travels and she came for uh, her first session with me yesterday uh, with a chronic, you know, lower back issue that she's very familiar with for many years. So, you know, I, I started to assess and diagnose her pain and uh, very quickly got into the, the macro, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and she was so surprised and... Uh, Anyways, I gave her the session. It was quite uh, emotional. And she said, I didn't realize Shiatsu was so spiritual. <laughs> well, that's interesting. You know? <laughs> yes. Uh, because her experience was, was, was the opposite. She would think of it as just a body work, working on the body, right? And uh, because of it, she, she just assumed that it's a form of massage or of a body work right uh, very mechanical that's her experience right um so it kind of touches on the opposite of what you're saying you know in some in some places where the emphasis is on the sp spiritual let's say and not enough on the earth medicine right uh but i had a case where it's the opposite yesterday so i she she was quite surprised of of the depth of she had so she said i didn't know she had so it was this deep um, um, those are always the beautiful uh stories uh yes hear that. yes uh, yes yes uh, uh this is a good time maybe to open uh the discussion to the people that are with us here today uh it'll be nice to hear some of their take on it so if anybody wants to join our discussion and put their you know insights into it that'll be great uh just raise your hand and i'll put you on the spot nini go ahead so thank you so much for this discussion um i think what i hear as some of the foundational challenges are that we actually perpetuate an illusion that yin and yang are two separate things if we think of yin yang as descriptions of the whole then we can't really separate them. So, you know, if somebody is working on the body and not taking into consideration the spirit, it doesn't mean it's not treating the spirit. Or if somebody's doing a very spiritual approach, it doesn't mean it's not affecting the body because we can't really separate 
body, mind, and spirit. Uh, we can theoretically, but theory is, for me, is just our attempt to describe reality. So, and then we get very theoretical and separate it all out. And that's where we disconnect the microcosm and macrocosm instead of seeing the wholeness or the oneness. And I feel that way about yin yang too. I, I don't even like to put and in between them because they're not separate. So when you touch, when you do diagnosis or when you do treatment, yes, yes, yin yang. That's, that's how I see it anyway. I don't think we can separate them except for theoretically. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes complete sense. What about you, Michael? No, uh, thank you very much. Yes, uh, I think we wanted to, uh, yeah, to, basically we wanted to open a discussion. And uh, I think we sh should have more discussions about that and uh, maybe, you know, uh, like agree on that, wh what you said. Um, um, it's not, uh, I don't want to, to point at someone with my finger, but I, 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 I read a lot and... Uh, and this accumulated like in the in the last two years, like, uh, uh, yeah, we don't do diagnosis, uh, we don't treat symptoms. And, uh, and now on this is like, you know, so <clears throat> I said, uh, that's funny. Uh, uh, and that's uh, interesting. And I see too, I, I, I see this idea that she had to, not, not globally, maybe, but Sometimes I have the impression it separates a little bit, you know, uh, like the yin part is the cool yin part, the yang part is not the, the cool. So if we can stick to that idea, I'm, I'm more than happy. <laughs> <laughs> but also what you said is uh, like, uh, it's a Hermes Trimegistos. Uh, he was like the godfather of European alchemy. And uh, he was like uh, the, the tabula smaragda. And uh, it, it was like, as above, so below, as below, so above. Like, uh, as you said, if I treat the body, I treat the spirit. If I treat the spirit, I treat the body, yeah? So, um, yeah, that's Beautiful. it. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, anybody else would like to share? Karen, go ahead, unmute yourself. Well, it's just along the same lines of, of what Nini and Mike were saying. It's, it's um, just because we put our hands on the body doesn't mean we're not working energetically anymore, right? I mean, the, the, the energy field, it's energetic work when you've got your hands on the channels. It's also physical work. And even when you're off the body, you're working with the proprioceptive system, which is a very, very physical aspect. There's, you know, it's all on a continuum. But I don't think you can say you just do energy work or you just do physical work. It, it's, it's, it's all sides of the same, the same globe, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. Uh, that would be another topic yeah, to talk about. <laughs> I love the channel system. And <laughs> <laughs> yes. Can Let's not a... get in there. We're going to get in trouble. <laughs> yes. oh, oh. You're true. But actually, you know, uh, 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 it's totally true. It's totally true. But uh, sometimes uh, I think you have to choose uh, wisely where you put the emphasis on. Uh, sometimes I have to, uh, sometimes I have to work more with the body because uh, I see a bigger possibility of uh, uh, influence. Uh, next question, are we allowed to influence someone or not? But as I said, according to see the natural state. And for example, I've got an infection and I had a, a high fever two days ago. And uh, so, so since two days now, I've been fastening. You know, I, I mean, I'm just, uh, yes, I do my prayers. I do my meditation. I do everything. But uh, the fastening helps uh, helps me most, you know, and just uh, fastening and sleeping a lot. So uh, here I choose, you know, conscious to, to work on the physical body because the infection is very much on the physical body. So, but this is my approach. I won't say that uh, other person might not find another approach. Huh? And uh, to have this freedom, you know, just to have this freedom to say, uh, yes, body, okay, spirit, okay, energy, okay, but where I put my emphasis on. And uh, so I would be pretty much satisfied if we can have that agreement in the Shiatsu world. Yes, I would be satisfied. Fantastic. Um, 
Anybody else would like to join us here in conversation? Go ahead, Vike. Right. Um, thanks for the um, discussion, uh, the debate on, on this uh, topic. Um, well, uh, we were um, we were taught that um, we would um, how do you say it um, make the connection with the client. So when the client is more on a physical level, you treat more physically. Um, when when you have more uh, an issue on the mind, uh, we treat more with uh, five elements, for example. So there you choose uh, the door that is open and then you, uh, how do you say it? Um, you treat according to that. Uh, that would be idea of the uh, different levels of medicine. Yes, uh, work yeah. to the, to put my emphasis on. Yes, I, I, I would agree to that. Uh, uh, this is always the example I talk to my students. If you have toothache, what do you choose? Be honest. If really, if you have toothache, what do you do? <laughs> if anyone can do it just on the energetic level, raise your hand. You will be my favorite dentist till the end of my life. Yeah, so when, <laughs> when there's an acute uh, uh, complaint, you, you want to um, get rid of that before you can go further because there would, wouldn't be any uh, chance to, um, to cure when, when you... Uh, you don't get access to that acute uh, uh, complaint. Yeah, so, absolutely. So when uh, in TCM you have like uh, the, the basic two uh, symptoms is uh, pain and sleep. Pain and sleep. If you have clients with pain and sleep, fix the pain, fix the sleep. Uh, so this is uh, like uh, highest priority because. Uh, Pain absorbs all the energy, also of the mind. Unless you're like uh, almost enlightened, you can have a distance from your pain. But if you're not, the en your mental energy goes into the pain. And uh, if you're not sleeping, you're like almost you're almost like a little bit drunk all the time. So your mind is not clear. So in these two cases, it's very hard to continue the work with the mind. So and uh, in, with these two symptoms, they say you have to fix them on a, on a physical level first, and, and then you can uh, go on. But it's basically it's just a pain and uh, sleep, uh, sometimes uh, in inflammation uh, stuff too, like when it's itching and it's also causing pain. But I would consider it pain. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's it. Thank you, Vike. Uh... We have time for maybe a couple more. Anybody else? You can raise your hand. I'll put you on the floor. What about Barbara? I know you're dying to say something, Barbara. I can tell. <laughs> put you on the spot. Just unmute yourself. Uh, uh, somebody said um, when you uh, uh, touch the body, treat the body, you also treat the mind. And when you treat the mind, you also treat the body. But I still think it depends on the, your focus. Like if you go to a doctor and he um, gives you an injection or or you uh, does something with your spine, he does it on the physical le level. Usually it's not so much treating my soul. It might be, but it's not. It's not. A, it's always depends on, on. I think on the focus of my focus and of the fo focus of the one who treats somebody. Yeah, and, totally. And, uh, makes all then, the difference uh, in the world. Yeah, makes a big difference for sure. Yeah. And then, of course, it's. Well, I, li I like this image with the door, and you just uh, if if you are uh, the one who treats somebody, just look for which which uh, door is open or on which level we can get to resonance and then we can see what happens next and somebody if he is very spiritual and doesn't want to um, talk about his his physical things you have to go to the spiritual door first where knowing that maybe you have to ground him a little bit later but this is i, I would like to say and about diagnosis um, i think the main point is 
I think many people in the shiatsu, shiatsu school, they misunderstand diagnosis as something fixed. Uh, I know you have something wrong with your gallbladder system. So I'll tell the, uh, the, to the patient and then this is always in the room and doesn't see it's uh, whole um, thing is always fluid. And, and, uh, and if I, I have this uh, uh, idea, yeah, something is wrong with the, with the water or with the, a fire or whatever, this, I can keep it in my mind knowing this is only one part and it might change very quickly. And don't don't have it as a, as something I now I know. I think this is, this is uh, not, not a good idea. <laughs> mm, mm, very wise. That was <laughs> a good part. part. Very good part. I think that's the problem that we uh, take over some of the Western mentality and uh, put it to some of the Asian principles and uh, then they don't work together because as you said, like label is like, bam, yeah. Uh, uh, diagnosis is like, I know you, but it, it definitely it's not about that. Uh, it's uh, my example as we, we had it already. It's like, a, there's a flower and it's dry, you know, it just, you know, and uh, that was very interesting and because my, my daughter, my, my, my small daughter, she's uh, six now. And uh, like in the beginning of the week, uh, I picked her up from the children's garden and it, it was cold outside. And, and But, uh, you know, with six years, they're already the cool girls in the children's gardens because they are the older girls. And uh, so so they just went out just, you know, with the shirt. And, <laughs> and uh, what's very interesting is uh, I thought they don't have this idea of cold yet, you know, they, they don't have this idea of cold yet. They, they, they are not so as wired and, and the experience is not that wide as we are. So they just go out and, uh, but okay. Yeah. Um, uh, therefore you have parents, therefore you have parents and the parents say it's cold, please wear something. And, uh, and I think that's for me is the idea of diagnosis, you know, it's like, uh, there, there is no higher hierarchy in it and, and there is no i know it better than you but damn it's fucking cold please wear something and <laughs> put it on <laughs> and and uh she didn't do it so uh, we have a circle of uh flu infection right now our <laughs> family due to those we were all dumb huh but uh, i think the, yeah the parent yeah i mean there's uh go ahead barbara I think the most important thing to keep in mind for me is nothing is right all the time. Uh, so if, if I have an idea now, this is good. Uh, no, um, usually I tend to more not interfere with my patients, not start telling them what to do or what is wrong with them. And sometimes this is just the right thing to do. Just, just listen to me. Now you should do this and this. Sometimes they are so in need, you should do that. And um, uh, often it's not so don't oh, don't say my principle is never interfere never tell tell your di diagnosis never do anything also don't don't say um you have to do diagnosis first and and put it on on the on the uh, screen and talk about it but it's de always depends on the situation and on mm. yeah, yeah yeah well said i i find that uh, sometimes it can come from the the pressure that our clients are under, you know, by the time they come to many of us, they've tried so many things and their condition becomes so complex and everybody is giving them their own diagnosis, you know, uh, that they come to us so confused and, uh, and anxious to know what's really going on, you know, and I'm sure Mike and Barbara and many of you experience that all the time. And what is it, Mikhail? What's happening with me? I don't understand. <clears throat> And uh, I, I like I like to always have the approach of uh, well the problem is there's two of you <laughs> there's the, like Michael said there's there's you sitting there inside and and then there's another you that is in the way <laughs> and and everything is disorganized and some things are in the way. So all we have to do is, is just bring more of you out and, 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 and just create some clarity, some order, and things will get better. To me, that's always been my approach. Yeah, I think that sums it up pretty well. Huh? <laughs> <laughs>
Mm. And they all, they all will say, of course, that sounds too easy. Well, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> uh, uh, I, we, we, we could keep on talking, you know. I would ask Bauer, don't you think that there are some uh, universal principles that, that, that don't change? You know, we, we, we should not discuss this out this evening. It would take us too long. But I'm truly convinced there are some pr principles that don't change. Yes, uh, what you said is the, the the change between yin and yang. You know, sometimes you start with diagnosis, sometimes you start with treatment, sometimes you choose this, sometimes uh, you choose that. So there's a flux. Yeah, so that's the law of change. The law of change is also one law. Yeah, but uh, um, just I think it's a good question, uh, and 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 I think uh, complete systems and especially. Uh, the Asian systems, why the Asian systems? Because I think there is nothing better with the Asian systems, you know, uh, there's nothing special about them, but the, the, they were able to preserve like the lineages. And I think this is very important to preserve lineages of knowledge and experience. And uh, like uh, in Europe, we had the problem with the, you know, with the Middle Age and the witches and, and stuff like that. So, uh, and uh, I think more or less globally, you could say we had the same approach and we found the same principles. Let's call them universal energetic laws, but we cut them, you know, we cut them. And uh, for me, Personally, I would say it's nothing special about the Asian arts, but they are the ones that kept it in a lineage. And so they have the best concept or the most complete concept to tap into this kind of knowledge. And that's why I love them. And, but uh, um, so if you take yin and yang, it's like uh, you find it in a cell. Uh, cells are functioning after the princi principle of yin and yang. It's like cells and the universe. A universe is a contraction and expansion. It is yang and yin. So uh, uh, if someone finds something that doesn't work after the yin yang principle, please let me know. Really, it's an honest question. I, I would be very curious uh, to hear that, to hear it. So you can see that there are kind of universal principles you, you can apply to everything and you will find them everywhere. And uh, I think, and, and maybe this was the idea of the discussion, if we have an energetic system, we should strive to search for those principles and make that the basis of our work, because then we don't get pulled away into sayings like this. And it, it, this struck me. It was, you mentioned the Congress in Vienna. Now we make the circle. Huh? You mentioned the Congress in Vienna and we had a panel discussion. We had a panel discussion and... Uh, and, uh, I remember one, that discussion. Yeah, yeah, we, we had a lot of panel discussions, but uh, not the big one. It was a smaller one. And the, uh, one teacher said, if someone is doing diagnosis, I would not call it shiatsu anymore. And uh, I said, why? Why? Why is this necessary? And, and then again, uh, we had it already. It's funny. People refer to Masanaga, you know, like uh, uh, treatment is diagnosis, diagnosis is treatment. But uh, anyway, <laughs> Wait, a lot of uh, things exciting. I mean, this we can go on for another hour, but I really also want to mention your book. Ah, uh, yeah. We 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 we're here also to promote your book, oh, we uh, lost which it, huh? uh, which <laughs> which uh, thank you for for sending me the book. Uh, okay. I've been there. We go. The yeah. Meridians, the maps of the soul. Uh, who has the book here in the panel? Anybody? Besides myself, <laughs> nobody yet. Oh, well, you have to get the book, and the reason that you have to get the book not because Mike Mandel is here and uh, and I'm being nice to him. You have to get the book because <laughs> because Mike Mandel is is uh, accomplished uh, in a way uh, accomplished a uh, a revision. That's the word that I was looking for. A revision to, you know, some of the many books that we've come across. And the way he breaks down uh, the meridians, uh, the way he breaks down the, you know, the, the, the physical, the emotional, and the psyche, and the spiritual aspect of each meridian uh, is done with so much clarity uh, while uh, sparkling it, of course, with Mike's flavor of, of bringing 
something so complex and juicy and, and uh, in his own unique way. Uh, I, I'm devouring this book uh, and it's refreshing uh, and it's clear. And I, I would go as far as to say that every school should have a book like this. Uh, it can be, you know, used as uh, a teaching book. Uh, so, Michael, uh, I'm, I'm really impressed, really, uh, about this uh, new book of yours. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Um, but, but you mentioned... I would like to have one. <laughs> <laughs> if you can give, if you can... Uh, bring to Budapest. Ah Let's yes, see. of course, of course. Yes. Please, uh, please. <laughs> oh, but it's a uh, your man like the three levels again: physical, emotional, and spiritual. Yeah, I tried to put it in in the book, and uh, yes, but mainly, did. mainly I wrote it for all shiatsu practitioners, uh, for all the practitioners that are bored to explain the clients. Uh, you know, the idea of meridians and uh, what a certain meridian uh, has to do with them. So. I just give the clients the book and say, you know, chapter three, gallbladder, uh, read it, make the exercise. And oh, you t- you're being too humble. It's a, it's a little <laughs> more than that. It's a, it's a little more than that than just giving it to the client. It's it's a, for someone, you know, for all of us, even experienced therapists, it's just a great, uh, a great read, really clear, really laid out beautifully. And uh, yeah, and a great reference book. You know, it's it's wonderful. Oh, thanks. Thanks. So where can people find this book? Uh, Basically everywhere. Uh, everywhere. Uh, if you still dare, die, uh, dare to buy on Amazon, you can find it on Amazon. <laughs> but uh, you can order it directly on uh, Singing, Singing Dragon. Singing Dragon is uh, the publisher. I think it's a very known publishing house singing dragon um very happy to do yes content. they've been around for a while okay i'll, I'll yeah, yeah. put those uh links on our facebook group and uh on the email so everybody can uh click those links uh so it's on amazon it's and singing dragon. german edition german edition is also at bookshop or amazon okay good the german edition yeah yeah is yeah fantastic. No, no, but that's the English edition. Uh, it's been on the German market for uh, two years, and uh, oh wow, yeah. Okay. So for yeah, for for I think for for the Shiatsu world, it was good. It sold quite a couple of copies uh, on, on the German market, and uh, so it spread uh, the, the message maybe uh, of the meridians to to a wider uh, audience and. The German edition, we already have the the six or the seven edition of it. I, I don't know uh, in two years, which is for a Shiatsu book, uh, a nice success, you could say. And uh, so uh, that, that's why we translated it. <laughs> Basically, that's it. <laughs> well, thank you for doing that. And uh, yeah, and I want to say thank you for having this conversation with us, Mike. And uh, very juicy as always, very expansive, lots to think about. And thank you here, uh, people that have contributed uh, to our conversation. Uh, yeah, hopefully uh, we can come back to it and expand because there's much more to talk about, I'm sure, when we talk about our therapy and the principles. So thank you, Michael. Thanks thank a lot, Fadan. Thanks, thank everyone. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.